Hi, I'm Alexey Mikhailov, uh, founder and CEO of Bering Yachts, and today we will talk about stability. Stability is related to both safety and comfort. Let us talk about the mechanics of stability. Here we talk about center of gravity, center of buoyancy, the metacenter and metacentric height of vessel, and how they interact. The downward force of the ship's weight works through the central point, the center of gravity. Metacenter is the point through which the lines of upthrust through the initial center of buoyancy and inclined center of buoyancy cut. The distance between the metacenter and the center of gravity is called the metacentric height. The stability increases with the increase of the metacentric height. If the metacenter is above the center of gravity, buoyancy restores stability when the ship tilts. If the metacenter is below the center of gravity, the boat is unstable and a roll angle results in capsizing. The ultimate goal of any stabilization system is to ensure the center of buoyancy stays below the center of gravity of the ship or the angle of inclination is minimal. Two factors are important for stability. It's a position of center of gravity of the boat and metacentric height. These two factors that describe your behavior of your boat, uh, let's see. So more stable boat is not always comfortable. The stability have to be in optimum. Speaking of stability and metacenter, the naval architects face a difficult decision while designing a boat. How stiff they should make the vessel. With the large metacentering height, boat is more stable, but it returns to the stability quickly if tilted. This violent movement of a stiff boat will be very uncomfortable for everyone on board. A small metacentric height, when a large portion of the ship's weight is placed on the upper part, away from the keel, is typical for tender ships. It makes them initially less stable, but ensure a smother roll movement when tilted. It takes such boats longer to return to the stable position, but this puts less stress on the hull and is more comfortable for the seamen. The ideal stability in terms of comfort is, uh, comes when the metacentric height of the boat is in vicinity one meter from light. 600 mm to 1 meter. Most of commercial crafts, fishing crafts, have a metacentric height of 0.8 meters, which make the boat sea kind. I mean, it's safe enough, of course, but it's, it's a sea kind that people can stand on it and work, and your brain is correcting your position, the center of gravity, and it's all work fine. However, if metacentric height is less than uh, these figures and going down to, let's say, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, the boat will, it's like a slow motion, but it may also feel uncomfortable because is uh, boat is not self-writing quick enough and maybe next wave can put it even further down on the side. It's better to keep it at the optimum from the safety point of view and also from the comfort point of view. For yachts and super yachts, the tall spare structure and high center of gravity make them more sensitive to the uncomfortable effects of waves. This is true for displacement, semi-displacement or full planning vessels. The boat producers need to assure static stability either at anchor or moored in a marina, so-called zero-speed solutions or dynamic stability when cruising in the open sea. International regulations govern boat stability in a broad sense. International maritime organization regulations, national laws, and recommendations from the classification societies primarily regulate the whole stability without use of any active systems. It must be stable enough by itself. We build our boats strictly adhering to all major recommendations on stability. We use RENA classification society rules for pleasure yachts as a baseline of certification for our boats. However, 
any other classification society may be used as per our customer's request. So boat material and structure, shape of the hull, keel size and weight, placement of the heavy machinery, installation of outriggers, use of ballast, all of this is a part of passive stabilization and it is regulated by international authorities. Fins, gyroscopes, interceptors and other stabilization mechanisms are a part of add-on active stabilizing systems and they are not regulated. For our boats, we comply with uh, requirements for commercial vessels and all our boats, when they're empty, they can sustain a 60 degrees inclination, which put them back to even keel after this inclination. Of course, when the boat is filled up with fuel, it's getting more stable. Then we are running into the factor when the boat is too stable, it's want to self right very quick. And inclination itself, when, when you get inclined, is not feel uncomfortable, but when the boat trying to get back to even keel, it's happening suddenly and it's rather uncomfortable and it's make you grab the, the handle and kind of like keep, keep your balance. A stable boat is much easier to stabilize further with the stabilization systems, which are, again, let's make it clear to everybody, the stabilization systems are not related to safety. They're just related to comfort. And um, at anchor or underway, all boats have tendency to roll and pitch. And it's the nature of the sea, it's nature of the craft. Even the largest cruise ships are not prone to, to roll and pitch. Uh, however, smaller boats are doing it. And of course, when you're at anchor or underway, you would like to have the boat as stable as possible. And it's what the stabilization systems are made for. The boat must be stable by itself. Naval architects design it so that it stays within the effective range of heel, no matter the wind and waves. There are additional structures that can be added to ensure passive stabilization. Safety-wise, the most stable boat, self-writing boat, and uh, fully fueled, our boats are close to this, uh, at least by calculation, of course, we never did a true inclination. I mean, the test, which is like flipping the boat upside down, like some manufacturers do, but it's mostly for smaller boats. We wouldn't do it. However, calculation and then physical uh, testing, because we, we do have inclination tests, which required by the class society or CE, if the boat is CE. We routinely do inclination tests to confirm the calculations. And it's important thing because the actual boat and water, with the test, it's, it's always more accurate uh, data. However, calculation nowadays, the modeling, like CFD modeling, uh, hydrodynamic modeling we do, uh, gives unbelievable results. It's so close to reality, so we can predict fuel consumption, we can predict uh, range, speed. Same with stability, we can calculate it very close and usually uh, during the inclination test we're just getting confirmation. So we don't need to do anything at ballast or anything like this. Bering builds thoroughly designed displacement ships with steel hull. These boats are stable because of their weight, hull shape and comprehensive calculation of vessels machinery and systems placement. An added active stabilization system makes bearing yachts comfortable and seaworthy in almost any condition. Gyroscope technology utilizes a flywheel spinning at high RPM to generate angular momentum, creating anti-rolling torque within a vessel's hull. It requires force to displace a wheel and a spinning gyro, which wants to remain upright and will compensate for the movement of the boat. Previously, cost, weight, power requirements and size have reduced gyro's use in the yachting market, but with the technological advancements, the tide has been reversed. Bering actively uses gyro stabilizers, especially on its smaller models. 
weighting almost as much as fin systems, gyros create no drag and provide flexibility with the design as they can be installed almost anywhere on the boat. The gyro works perfectly eliminating roll at zero speeds at the same time, drawing significantly less energy than active fins. Internal installation requires no through-hull cutting, thus reducing drag or damage chances. However, a gyro system generates the same amount of force no matter what speed the boat is moving, so it is less effective the faster you go, while fines generate greater and greater force the faster the boat is going. If the boat's weight exceeds 100 tons, gyro becomes less effective and might be used together with fins. Gyro, by its nature, by way the system works, is not compensating for prolonged forces like wind. If you have a side wind and you have inclination of few degrees, gyro will not compensate it. Or if on displacement boat you, you make a curve, uh, the boat have tendency to incline out, outwards of the, the turn, and this prolonged force also not compensated by gyro as well as a long following sea, quartering following sea. It's kind of like slow motion and gyro make a jolt, trying to keep it straight and then give up. And it's rather uncomfortable. Fin-shaped stabilizers come in several shapes and forms. There are essentially two types of them, fixed or retractable. Fixed fins can also be dead fixed, active roll and flapping. All moving fins require constant adjustment while working, using sensors and specific software to create the correct angles for best stabilization. Either lift or downforce work as opposed to the roll moment created by the waves. Fixed fin system limitations are that they are mounted outboard, thus being in danger of damage from grounding or impact from floating debris. Retractable fins can be fully retracted into a pocket or into the underside of the hull when not in use. Another issue is the drag the fins create at speeds. Fins usually work much better underway instead of at rest. Bearing is actively using fin stabilizers, sometimes together with the gyroscopes for improved comfort. We use gyro, we use fins, or combination of these two. We have a couple of boats which have both gyro and fins, and they complement each other. They work together, they, they recognize each other, and they do accompany each other well. In these prolonged forces, the fins are working very, very well, and they can compensate the, the wind inclination and further stabilize the boat. So they, they basically join their forces in stabilization and also compensate for their weak spots. Usually, sea keeper is enough at anchor. It will keep the boat, if it's adequate sea keeper for the size, it will keep the boat with no need for the fins. So at anchor, sea keeper is ideal system and you can use it alone without fins and it's redundancy at the end. So we're not trying to encourage you to put two systems because it's uh, maybe uh, not cost effective I would say. However, it's the best of two worlds to have it combined. So we have a good chance to experience uh, how two systems work simultaneously. Recently when we were at Bahamas and uh, we were doing some travels and filming there and we had pretty rough weather. We had uh, up to 20 foot sea and we were going with Sea Keeper and four fin uh, stabilizing system, hydraulic stabilization system engaged simultaneously and our role was very, very minimal. I would say it's two, three degrees, and we had a beam sea, we have a quartering head sea, quartering following sea, we, we had all direction of seas, and we've been able to maintain normal life on the boat with uh, sit-down meals, 
and glasses of wine on the table. It's, it's a quite a spectacular view when you see outside such a sea state and you sitting around the table and having a glass of wine. I've been on many boats and I can tell you it's hard to achieve on fairly small 92 foot boat. So, and again, it's make everybody feel, it's make you feel like you're at home. So you, you're able to do exact same things you would do at home in the middle of the ocean with less than perfect condition. You feel comfortable, you feel safe, all emotions are predictable, no spilled wine or tea. Everything is manageable and uh, stability is important. Thank you.